The last matrix operation I'd like to mention here is something called the transpose of a matrix. So the way the transpose works is you take a matrix and you essentially swap the rows and columns of that matrix. And the way this is notated is, let's suppose we have a matrix A, that's M by N again. And I want to take the transpose of it. I use a superscript T here. And it's just read transpose of A. And what that does is it produces a new matrix, which is now going to be N by M. And in that new matrix, the rows and the columns are swapped. So for instance, if I have a matrix, we'll make it non-square here. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So that particular matrix, again, has three rows and two columns. So this is a 3 by 2 matrix. If I then take the transpose of that matrix, I essentially switch the rows and columns. So row 1 here becomes column 1. So I'd write 1, 2 here in the transpose of that matrix. Row 2 then becomes column 2. And row 3 now becomes column 3. So there's the transpose of the matrix A. Notice the dimensions as I uh, mentioned swap here. So now the transpose of a 3 by 2 matrix gives us a 2 by 3 matrix, that is 2 rows and 3 columns. Now, another way to see this is when we take the transpose of a matrix in terms of ij or index notation for the components of a matrix, you can see for instance that the component a11, right, if I swap the ij indices here, I still wind up with a11. So that was kind of unmoved in a sense. But if I then track a different element that's not on this kind of diagonal, I can look at, for instance, A12. What happens when I apply the transpose to A to this particular element? Well, its indices are also swapped. So A12 becomes A21, as you can see here, and vice versa for the rest of the elements in the matrix. So generally speaking, if I have a matrix and I consider the element IJ in the i row and the j -th column, and I take the transpose, I then wind up with the A sub J I element. Another way to see this transpose operation is to consider a matrix, let's say a square matrix for instance here. So let's define another matrix B, and we'll make this again the 1, 2, 3, 4 matrix. If I take the transpose of B, another way to sort of think of this, again, this operation of swapping rows and columns, is that the transpose operation leaves all of the elements on the long diagonal here, the 1 and the 4 of our matrix stationary, and flips across this long diagonal all the other elements of the matrix. Another one, in other words, 1 and 4 remain stationary, and these off-diagonal elements, as they're called, uh, essentially switch here, so then we get the following matrix. And notice once again, row 1 became column 1, row 2 became column 2. And one other comment I want to make about uh, the transpose operation is that we have these nice properties that are commonly used. If I take AB, so if I add two matrices together and I take the transpose, well that's the same actually as the sum of the transposes of those matrices. So there's kind of a nice property to know. And a second uh, common property that's sort of involved with matrices and their transposes, on the other hand if I take the product of two matrices AB and then I apply the transpose, to be careful about this, we flip the order of the multiplication of those matrices and subsequently take the transposes respectively. So in other words, AB transpose equals B transpose A transpose.